Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where we share stories of small victories over those who have wronged you. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And the first story is, Great Revenge Against a Cheap Scamming Boss. When I was 17 I moved across the country with my then boyfriend, now husband. I was pretty psyched when I got a job at A&W because it was my first real job and the pay was really good. Great compared to my former province, SH compared to the pay scale in this province. I was working day shift and my manager told me it was very important to keep my own record of my hours because the computers didn't work to log in. After getting my first paycheck and being short 8 hours, I realized why it was so important, but the owner assured me the hours would be on my next check. I had worked there for about 2 months before being promoted to evening manager, with a fairly substantial raise of about $4 per hour. I was still owed about 24 hours of pay. Technically my boss always puts my missing hours on the next check, but then I would be missing even more hours from the current pay period. Things started getting really SH. Some of our kitchen staff quit, and instead of replacing them, he just moved around the three remaining kitchen staff so that we only had one person in the kitchen per shift. We were also really short on staff, so I ended up working the counters in the mornings, 7 to 10 alone, and then coming in for my regular evening shift, 3 to 11. Apparently my raise was only in name, because my last two paychecks had my former salary on them. My boss assured me that it would be on the next check. Then came Stampede. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Calgary Stampede, it's the biggest event in the city. It's a week-long rodeo and festival, where thousands of people flood the city, drunk and wearing cowboy hats. Our A&W was right downtown, so needless to say it was a very busy week. We still only had one kitchen staff and me working the morning shift. The day manager came in early to help with the counter, and we tried all the staff to see if we could get extra bodies, but only one staff came in. Breakfast was a nightmare. A&W breakfasts are real breakfast made to order. Eggs, bacon, French toast, none of it pre-made, and there was no time to pre-make it anyway, because the store was packed pretty much round the clock. So with one person full-time in back, and one floater, it was taking 8 plus minutes per breakfast, and the store was lined to the doors, and the drive through lined up right into the street. We called the owner and told him he needed to come in right now, because we needed him and his wife to help us. We were drowning in angry customers. 30 minutes pass and we call him again. I'll be there right away is his famous line. Another 30 minutes and he's not here. We call his house and get voicemail, so we assume he's on his way. This is great, because he doesn't live far, so he should be here in 10 minutes at the latest. It's now 10 a.m., two hours since we first called, and no answer on his house phone or his cell. We've had lots of people walk out. We've had people demand refunds and leave, but the store is still packed, and there's still an hour left on breakfast, but we haven't had a chance to prep lunch, not even cut up the veggies for burgers, so we were still effed come lunch. I look at the day manager and said, F it, I quit. He says, you know what, F this, I quit too. We call the boss again and leave a message on both lines telling him we quit, along with two other staff. The only one that doesn't is the one kitchen staff, and we will stay for another 30 minutes to give him time to get here, but then we're walking out. 30 minutes pass and no word from the owner. We lock the door and tell the customers in the store that their breakfast is free, since they've all been waiting for so long, and we're closing the store once all of them are served, but they have to take their meals to go. We serve at least 50 free breakfasts, at around $10 a piece. Once the store is empty, we do our cash out, drop it in the slot under the tills and get ready to leave. People were still coming in the drive-thru and trying to get in the door, confused to why the store would be closed in the middle of the day during Stampede. When I went in to return my uniform, I made sure to get the money that we were all owed. He paid us out of the till in cash, because we refused to leave until he paid us. It means that I ended up with about $200 cash that was tax-free, so that's a bonus. I didn't get a call until two hours later, after the lunch rush, from my former boss, claiming we owed him all the money he lost while the store was closed, and for the free breakfasts. I told him he was well informed about what was going to happen. We knew he got the message because we had filled his inbox and he couldn't leave any messages, but when we called to tell him the store was closed, the inbox was no longer full. He shouldn't have tried to call our bluff, because we weren't bluffing. He probably lost out on $15,000 worth of sales or more from the store being closed for 3 hours and missing the lunch rush, which on a normal day brought in about five grand, but during Stampede could easily bring in $10,000. This being Calgary in 2006, I got another job the next day, working as a secretary at Parks Canada, making $17 per hour, and never having to deal with cheap bosses or angry customers again. The second story is, A-hole co-workers and boss get what's coming to them. So I lived in a college town and waited tables at a restaurant for a little over a year. I planned on going to school, but had problems with my financial aid and didn't have parents to fall back on, so instead I worked my A off and partied even harder. I generally liked my job for a while. I made decent money for being only 19 years old, and my coworkers and I drank and partied together frequently after our shift. The only obvious downside from the beginning was that both our kitchen manager and general manager had serious anger issues, like to the point that they had both been ordered by corporate to go through our anger management classes in order to keep their positions in the company. 
Our GM was especially notorious for making every single new person cry at one point or another. Knowing this from the beginning, I developed an FU attitude, which actually made him respect me more in the long run. Anyways. So, one night while at a party with coworkers, I decided to leave early, because I had to be to work early in the morning for my second job. I left my roommate there, who I learned later had gotten drunk and fooled around with one of the cooks that I worked with. The only problem with this was, he had a girlfriend, whom also worked at the restaurant. Oh, and she had been recently promoted to management. Great. Word quickly spread about my W roommate with the other waitresses, and since none of them could directly take it out on my roommate, I became the target. There was officially a target on my back, and nearly every one of my coworkers went out of their way to make my job a living heck, because apparently despite my absence, I was single-handedly responsible for two other individuals' drunken actions, despite the cheating boyfriend involved in the whole thing. Everything was my fault. Cool. So I carried on with my FU attitude, continuing to show up to parties and gatherings despite the girls' best efforts to banish me from all social events. So one day right before Christmas, we were especially busy and extremely short-staffed. Being a college town, everyone went home for the holidays, and whoever hadn't left was scheduled to work all day. Our bartender for the day and night shift called in as well, so our angry GM had no choice but to step in as our bartender during an extremely busy lunch shift. We got our A's handed to us sideways. To make matters worse, our manager decided that making the servers drinks were not a priority and made his bar guests his main focus. As servers, we were also not allowed behind the bar to get our own drinks. I had multiple tables walk out because they were within earshot of my manager telling me to F off when I told him my tables now had their entrees before their cocktails, and he then beat me out when he had to comp their entire checks. Add in the fact that all of my coworkers were being a bag of C's and I was just daydreaming about walking out. So the rush ends, the restaurant empties, the entire dining room looks like a battle zone. Everything in sight is trashed and depleted entirely. I'm getting ready to hustle and get things back in order to prepare for the dinner rush, and what do I see? Every single server except one immediately clocks out and sits down to take a break. I go up to them and ask WTF they think they're doing, and they go on to whine about how they've been there all day and they're starving and need a break. I'm like, we've all been here all day. You guys expect me to single-handedly put this restaurant back together after this SH show we just endured? They all just smirk at each other and go on to eat their food. I had officially reached my effing limit, so I print off my report, gathered the cash that I owed to the restaurant, and walked into the manager's office. He snatches the money out of my hand without a word. I walk back out into the dining room and calmly go over to the employee closet and to put on my coat and gather my things. At this point, I can just feel the multiple stairs burning a hole into the back of my head. I just smiled, closed the door, walked by the bees sitting at the table and said, have a great night, guys, and walked out of the restaurant. I could feel the panic ensue as I exited the building. We were already short-staffed as it was, and me walking out put the final nail in the coffin. My manager blew up my phone all night, apologizing for being an A and begging me to come back to work. I explained to him that while he was indeed an A and I appreciate his offer to let me keep my job, there was no way in heck I could return to work after royally effing over every single person working that day. I went on to receive nasty messages and comments on social media afterwards, which made it all the more satisfying, seeing how they had all gotten their panties up in a bunch over my walkout. I normally would never do that at a job and haven't since, but seriously, those bees had it coming. And the last story is, sexist and abusive to my apprentice? Enjoy your repair bill. A little backstory here. I'm a mechanic with roughly 14 years experience. I've worked in the same shop that I did my apprenticeship in, and in turn the kindness my boss and his son gave me, I've given to the three apprentices I've had of my own. Most unusually, my most recent apprentice is a 17-year-old female. Let's call her Emma. Now, Emma isn't the brightest person I've ever taught, but she's polite, courteous, and bloody good at what she does. Most definitely has the capacity to be better than everyone else in the shop, if she applies herself. After 14 years, I recently ended up getting promoted to shop foreman. Basically, I dish out job cards like ice cream and get to lecture my techs when they do something stupid. But this makes every tech my responsibility. Cue moron number one and his wife. I know moron as he lives across the street from me. One particularly busy day, my two apprentices were cleaning up an oil spill when moron driving a Range Rover Sport decides to drive over the oil spill, spreading it around like herpes. Moron is not a car person. In fact, I'd wager he knows nothing about his flashy Range Rover beyond what he read in the brochure. He steps out of the car and into a puddle of engine oil, which I delightfully watched splash onto his expensive shoes and trousers. His first words were not, Hi, I'm here to get my front tires changed. They were, I demand to speak to Anon. He's a manager here. My two apprentices now having to clean oil from under the Range Rover, I walk over with the biggest SH eating grin known to man. Hello, sir, how can I help you? He babbles on in his demanding tone, wanting this and that and the other, eventually getting to the point that his front tires were as bald as Patrick Stewart. Now, speaking to my apprentices who had since cleaned up the mess, this effing idiot had made, I tell them to get a jack, a torque wrench, and a 21mm deep socket. As soon as Emma stands up, he says, I don't want a girl working on my car, I want a professional. 
He then follows with, why is she even here? She should be working in a kitchen somewhere. To which his wife snickered at, oh boy, firstly you never insult a lady in front of me. Secondly, make sure that you never insult one of my coworkers in my presence. I could see from the corner of my eye that Emma was starting to tear up. I tell Freddy, the other apprentice, that he should go see Bill in case he needs any help. I turned around and gave Emma the most unbelievable smile I could muster. In a workshop, it means someone's getting effed. A few minutes passed and both front wheels were off, with the moron still making comments, like her A belongs in a club, not a garage. I was trying so hard not to smash his face in. Honestly, you know those people that have faces that you want to destroy? He had one. New tires on, and he pays a grand total of 266.30 plus VAT. Not revenge worthy. Tip? You're effing joking. He speeds out like he's a racing driver into the distance. I am a person to hold grudges. A few weeks pass and Moron comes back this time for an MOT. We don't do MOTs on site, but we get pretty sweet deals for customers, usually in the 25 to 30 pound range. Now it's time for revenge. Car fails MOT on a variety of things, from leaking shock absorbers to headlamps. As I said, I hold grudges. So for every single item we changed, I charged each item for an hour's labor, even if it was changed within an hour. One headlight, 70 pounds. One brake light, 70 pounds. Every hour to the second that ticked past, I counted. 14 items on the MOT, plus what was on the service inspection. I couldn't have laughed more when I handed in the invoice. Total repair cost, 3,259.47, including VAT. Roughly 1,500 pounds of that was just labor. I showed Emma, who did all the work, and she laughed. I ended up giving her 20% of labor as commission. He hasn't been back. This was six months ago. I hope you enjoyed these stories, and if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button.